Hello. Hello, how are you? Good. Konnichiwa, how are you, how are you doing, ma'am? Me All right, how are you? you Swell with a capital you. S. Very nice intro. Can <laughs> you hear you. me all right? We can hear yeah. you. So I'm loving the, it's not chill, it's these aqua headphones you have. I'm definitely loving the aqua. Oh, thank you. I, I just got, got your notes. Thank you. That, that's, uh, that sucks, sucks when that happens with the audio, audio when you go yeah, all the way I'm, through something. I'm still surprised anyone ever watched that review because the audio was so bad. <laughs> you got 99 views with bad audio. That means you're killing it. So there you go. That's, That's like, like us. Like, like we, we don't, don't have somebody behind the camera. camera. There's there, there's, there's nobody monitoring the audio, so, so we can get through mm -hmm. a two-hour episode and then just keep, keep our fingers crossed, crossed the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And before we even get started, I just want to let you know, I was going to say you were cool because I saw the bride of Chucky, but then I saw the good guy doll in the background. He has a good guy doll, so this is me. This is serendipity I, here. I, I have my buddy. Yeah, this one is from uh, Child's Play 2. I want the original one from the first Child's Play, but that, that one costs like $600. And, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> People try to come over and play. We're like, Don't un you unbox it. You yeah, buy it. You I, unbox it. You buy. I haven't unboxed it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, <clears throat> so I guess we can just get right into it. There's Three, no, oh, two. Yo, well, hold on, hold on. I'm oh, not so that ready. ready. I'm not ready. ready. This is a little bit different than the normal interviews we do. Exist. We don't have a script. There's no script here. I don't read script, script reads me. Uh, before, we, before we get into the movie, though, I want to, I just want to uh, let the audience know who you are. You, you host, uh, What Did I Just Watch? Um, I think our channels are, are, similar as far as the views we're getting the subscribers we're getting um what what has your journey been like as a uh youtube creator because i mean we just we just started after the, okay. after we finished the movie mm -hmm. we decided to give this a try and the algorithm is uh is rough i was wondering how that's oh, been yeah. for you like navigating that when i started the channel i mostly started just because i wanted to talk about movies that a lot of people don't talk about if you notice the, my first review was for martyrs <laughs> so i was like i have to talk to somebody about what i just experienced <laughs> so um the, the algorithm is is murder right now especially when it comes to horror and for people like me who, who tend to put more visuals and I mean, when I started out, I didn't put visuals in my videos because I didn't know how. But as I learned to edit, I put more visuals. And now all of a sudden, like uh, <laughs> people can have literal. Wait, are we cursing in this podcast? We're we not cursing in your podcast. Yeah, okay, People can have Just... literal dicks in their music videos. <laughs> but if I put like an exploding head, I might get into, into a little bit of trouble. <laughs> so, yeah. It's weird. It's weird. They yeah. like what they like. It's very weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that that's uh, so you you've actually taught yourself as you were going with the channel. You taught yourself to edit and everything. Yes, that's awesome. What did, what do you use to edit on? Well, I started out on iMovie because I mm -hmm. that's what I had. I had a, a Mac laptop from college, so I just started on iMovie. Um, then I ended up finding a program called Power Director that I like better than iMovie. Although iMovie is better for editing sound. If you ever want to like make little corrections in sound, I can still do that. And iMovie and PowerDirector still isn't that great about being able to fiddle with sound too much. But it it's it, uh, has an easier interface as far as editing for people who are not professional editors. Yeah, the, uh, the sound is always, it's so hard to find a good program that can handle sound well. And I know that, I, I know that you did a number on the episode you did for us on your channel. Like I could, I could hear the filters on there that were, that were cleaning it up. I could only imagine what it sounded like beforehand. And there's always oh, that. Oh, before like, I thought, I thought I was going to have to scrap the whole thing, but I was so emotional that day. I was like, there's no way I'm re I'm re-recording this with the same energy. The way yeah. I felt was it didn't matter if you had bad audio because if someone's a writer on the film, they heard everything you said. It didn't matter. You could have been mouthing it. Like, I know what she just said. I know what she's saying. So, you know, I appreciate Again, we really appreciate you taking out the time. So what are you up to now? What do you have going on? How's the channel? And what are, what are the things you got going on? Well, I just recently came back to it because I had stopped for a little while. And then I, I had started my own business. I was running that pre-pandemic and then COVID hit. I had to like kind of put my business on hold and say, well, what can I do? Well, I'll go back to YouTube and see what's happening there. It's kind of almost forced my hand. Like I was 
riding a fence anyway, saying, well, I, I kind of like doing YouTube, but I kind of like doing this other thing. And then something happened in my life that said, this is what you're going to do because we're going to remove all your other options. So mm-hmm. I came back to YouTube and so far it's been going pretty well because I, um, the, the sub- subscriber count is um, increasing and there's a lot of interaction with my audience, like, which I like. And I've been able to branch off into different things. I'm not only just on my channel, I'm also on Mild Fuzz Movies. Um, and we have a show called The Sacred Hockey Mass that publishes every Friday. And on Mondays, I'm on Hood Podcasts where we talk about pretty much news of the strange because there's a hood all over the world. <laughs> And that's more of a live stream. That has no editing. If y'all haven't discussed a crate challenge yet, I don't know what's going on. Like (laughs) these people trying to maneuver themselves up and down crates. It's weird. Oh, wow. (laughs) That sounds dangerous, actually. We have not done a crate trick challenge yet. We've been, we've mostly. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go, please, please. Oh, I was just saying, we've mostly been doing reactions to the craziest TikToks and also this gentleman that's in Eastern Europe that um, has married his doll, but then he married a second doll. So he's in like a a polyamorous relationship with these two dolls. And one of the dolls is half chicken. It's, yeah. (laughs) He he had her specially made so that her bottom half would be resemble a chicken. It's, yeah, there's some weird stuff in this world. It takes love. a lot to get me to shut up, and you just did. I was just gonna say, love, love is love. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> He's not hurting anybody as long as the. I mean, the doll <gasps> is. I mean, <gasps> as much as the doll <gasps> can consent. <laughs> what? Yeah, there will. I mean, fifty years from now, there will be there will be rights for dolls. So at some point, I mean, we're just we'll, we'll get. To I hope I'm dead by then. <laughs> I really do. And then, oh, there's. One other show I have to plug, and that's Coast to Coast Horror with Crystal and Shasha, where we do a weekly podcast. And I had a podcast with Crystal Connors, who is a horror author. She's published about 10 books. Uh, One of her first books, which is really great, is called The Darkness. And we just recently did some on location stuff because she's in Seattle. I'm in Orlando. That's what we call it, Coast to Coast Horror. And she recently visited Orlando. We ran over to Casa Dega, got a little bit of uh, spiritual uh, awakening there, and then we went on a ghost tour in downtown Orlando, and those videos will publish pretty soon. That's uh, awesome. The uh, w- off the off the cuff question here: Do you ever watch Supernatural? Yes, I have. <laughs> well, I'm asking. Let me. She, she she's doing a thing called Coast to Coast Horror. Supernatural had to come up at some point in time. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get us back on track. Casadega <laughs> is a great place to uh, to to find the spirit. I took my on the way from Orlando. Back to Jacksonville, we stopped with Adeline and Casadega and walked in those woods or went in that little the haunted oh, hotel. Oh, was it the fairy park? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it's a. It's so crazy when you go somewhere. Once you like, if you read a bunch of stories about it before you go, it could just be just some woods or whatever. But it there's there was like an ominous feeling the whole time. I think just because of all the research we did. I know what you're talking about when you read something and then experience it. Like I read supernatural books and then I experienced it. I'm so glad we're back on track. All right, let's get it going, guys. <laughs> And, and to, to your point, it goes back to saying, well, yes, yeah, she's a goth girl, but we don't really do that. And you're right. From the era that me and you come from, 70s, 80s, maybe early 90s, we didn't do shit like that. But nowadays, these kids, do not they identify as whatever the fuck they want to be, and they will do this shit. And that was what's crazy. We were just trying to say, listen, it's like a, the greatest magicians, what do they say? Look right here, but this is what's really happening. And if you yeah, know this- the Mr. X. So that's why we had the two killers meet early in the film. Like, why would we have this underdeveloped character in Brie meet Robert Partridge? And they have that stare down. Two killers will stand each other down, except one person is really finna fucking lose it. But it's not who you think it is. So he's resetting the camera right now. So I, I must ask, I must ask, are you a fan of the TV show The Office? I've well, seen a few episodes of it, but I, I can't say whether. I mean, I didn't dislike it, but I didn't. I don't love it at the same time. I'm just ambivalent. So I'll forgive you. It's okay. <laughs> you can't go I, one I, episode I Port- without. I love Portlandia, though. <laughs> Portlandia, you know what that is? Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Fred Armisen. Ah, yes. I, I've never seen that. I got to check it out. Okay. Yes, yeah. that's what that's what Orlando is turning into. Like we're getting gotcha. all kinds of craft breweries, microbreweries. Listen, I would love that. Listen, I think me and you just became best friends because either my my eye my tired eyes deceive me, but is that an, over your camera right shoulder left? Is that a ball of true blood? Oh, yes. (laughs) 
Yes, I got that from the True Blood. There used to be a True Blood store um, in Times Square, in New York. As oh, before I moved down here, I used to like I lived in New Haven in Connecticut, and it's just easy to just hop on a Metro North, run into the city, go run around for for the day, and then go back home because I can't afford. I couldn't afford to live in the city, so. You are a side side tired ass. I mean, I love that True Blood, man. I wanted to I wanted to bring up the music. There was something. There was another thing that you you had brought up, and I I wanted to offer our our perspective, or actually the 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 composer's perspective. Um, your you said the music was great. It was just used um, like it was it wasn't used correctly or in the right places, and the. The composer, uh, Dr. Jones, he he actually laid the um, he laid the music out, like composed it to the scene. And he had a, he, he had a really interesting concept when he was working in the movie because he knew that Robert Partridge is not the um, he's not the actual killer. So when he was scoring it, he did the like the opposite of like when something suspenseful is happening to a character it's usually calm and almost melodramatic. And then when seemingly nothing is happening or you're going internally to something like Robert going in his own head, that's where the violins start churning and it starts where you would typically think something suspenseful is about to take place. And his motivation for that was that this isn't happening. These these are things that are happening to Robert. This isn't things that Robert is doing to people. So you're watching it ex- expecting that Robert is the antagonist. And in reality, it's the, the music is suggesting that everybody else is the antagonist or those quiet, those quiet moments are the real antagonist where uh, the trauma comes up. These are things that are happening now. The goth black girl, like black kid skateboarding. White people come into rallies because I hate when people of our culture say, oh man, fuck them crackers or fuck these white people. You do realize in Rosewood, Florida, they hid us from people that were trying to kill us. So it's it's a human condition. It's, 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 I know black people that won't even help me change my fucking tire, but if I call him oh, yeah. somewhere, okay then. So, so that's, a, that's I've, I've, <laughs> I've been in situations where my car was broke down on the side of the road and saw people that looked like me pass right by me. <laughs> And, and people that didn't look oh, like shit. me stop and help. Ma'am, you need some help. And also it's it's very important for um I, I do realize that a lot of times when people do respond that way, they're responding from a place of pain and hurt, but they have to realize that you can't see everything only through your experience and only through an American lens. I remember I was talking to another YouTuber and they were using, because I try not, if you notice, I usually use like Euro American. I try not to use just white as a catch-all term because uh for one thing, YouTube is a worldwide format. If I'm discussing something that applies uh, specifically in America, I would try to um, make that known because I I could I would feel bad if like some little kid in Bosnia is watching and is like the hell what the fuck did I do? <laughs> I don't have nothing to do with that. <laughs> that's great advice. You you are right. Yeah. She's right about that. That's great advice. That that's awesome. I, I love it. I'm gonna say something I know you've heard because I've heard it my entire life, and you're gonna laugh and you said I guarantee she's heard this. Why you talk so? Why you talk so proper? Why you talk white? Oh, the first people to say that to me were my own cousins. <laughs> I, I own remember, people. I, let me tell you this story. I remember um, I grew up more in kind of a. I used to call it suburbs, but my sister corrected me and said, "You're not from the suburbs. You wish you were from the suburbs. You're from a rural community. You walked by a cornfield to high school." <laughs> and I was like, oh "Rural Thanks. people never want to say we're rural. <laughs> say I'm suburban." Yes. Yes. But like my hometown still doesn't have a Walmart or a Target. Like it's small town, small town. But on weekends, sometimes my parents used to take me to go visit my cousins and they live in the projects. And at this point, we went to um, Bulls Park Projects. And I remember being about five or six years old. And I said to my cousins, hey, guys, I know what we could do. And they just about fell on the floor. <laughs> they were like, she talks like a white girl. Oh, my God. She sounds like those kids from Nickelodeon. I got called white girl for like two years after that. <laughs> Don't I know the feeling? Yeah, Don't that's, I, that's, that's, that, that's that passive passive racism. Right. It be, it, it, that's where they came up with the phrase, it be your own people. <laughs> it be your own people. You're like, ah, damn. And, but what I've learned is it doesn't matter what we talk, Southern country. There's like, it's just, we, we should learn to celebra- celebrate our diversity versus like magnifying and saying that. And I tell people this, we're the worst animals in the world. And I mean human beings, because the fact that our terms are called human beings and hue use is derived from the word color. But that's the one thing we lambost everybody about is their fucking color. Like, Get the fuck over it. 
asshole doesn't have a color. You're just an asshole. Oh, that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. Yeah. And culture, people keep trying to divide each other up. By they're they're trying to categorize people by how they look rather than their culture. The way we sound is endemic of our culture. I've met white kids that were from the hood, and they're going to sound like they're from the hood. So it's not it's not so much a race thing, but an environment thing. <laughs>